So let's have a look at uh, our privacy respecting and trusted voting system. So we'll be using zero knowledge proof here and oblivious transfer to be able to make sure that we can respect the rights to privacy for the voters. So before we start, we're going to implement the method with elliptic curve cryptography. So this is the method that's used within Tor, Bitcoin, IoT, cryptography and so on. And it's an excellent method uh, for implementing a public key type system. So with this we have a point on an elliptic curve and then we generate a random value, a pr that's our private key. So that becomes our gradient and we project the gradient up until we find a point on the elliptic curve at which it, it crosses and that's our public key. So private key looks like this, it's a scalar value and a public key is an XY point on the elliptic curve. The G point we pick for the particular elliptic curve that we have. So in this example I'll be using this, this uh, elliptic curve here. So the uh, values that we have, so y squared is equal to x cubed plus ax plus 7. So in this case a is, is uh, plus b and a is 0 and b is 7. So that gives us our particular elliptic curve uh, mathematical shape. We then take a base point, in this case we'll take this base point. And then what we have is a p-value, or a prime number, in which all our operations are done mod p. So this constrains us to a finite field. This prime number here uh, allows us to create all our mathematical operations as we normally would, such as add and multiply, but constrain them with inside this prime number p. So let's say we have a voting system with Bob, Alice and Carol. And for this, we have a trusted voting agent which will take, uh, which will register Bob, Alice, and Carol, and then send these on to our vote counter. In this case, Victor. Initially, what we do is we create a private key for Victor that will be used to authenticate the votes as they come in. So, for our elliptic curve method, what we do is that Bob creates his random value. We'll call that uh, little x b. Then he will match that onto an elliptic curve with big X B. Next, what he'll do is create a blind in factor, which is a random number uh, a value of B. He then multiplies B by our elliptic curve point to give B times X B. So this will be a point on the elliptic curve, uh, which is this value multiplied by this value. This is then given to the voting agents, so both Alice and Carol will do that. Then the voting agent will then send through each of the values that they receive for the registration to the vote counter. So for uh, Bob it will be B times XB and Alice will have her own B value and also uh, Carol will have uh, this blend and factor. Each will be different and each will select a different point on the elliptic curve. So next uh, Victor sends back to, to Trent uh, the value k, his private key, multiplied by the value that was received. So in Bob's case we end up with k times b times xb. All of these are done obviously mod p as we've seen. So then Trent sends back the value to Bob, and Bob will keep this value. Alice will have her value, and Carol will have her value too. Next, and this is implementing this method here. Next, Bob, when he's ready to vote, divides that value by B, and ends up with K times XB. K, remember, is the private key of Victor. And no one should know that apart from Victor. So we end up with k times xb. So now when he's ready to vote, he sends through, yes, I vote. I vote yes. He sends through this k xb. But he also sends through the value of xb that he has kept secret. So it's secret because the blinding factor would have hidden it from Trent 
and Victor. So then, tre Victor will take the value of xp and multiply it by k, his private key, if it equals the value that that uh, Bob sent through, then he knows that the vote came from Bob, because only Bob would have known the blinding factor. So not even Trent or anyone else can actually uh, replicate the vote. But the good thing here is that uh, Victor cannot tell who it was who's actually voting, but knows that it was someone who has voted. Uh, it was someone who has voted correctly. So in this case. Uh, in this case, the vote is posted anonymously so that there is no way that Victor knows that it was actually Bob who voted, but the vote is credible. So how do we do this divide with elliptic curving with integers? Well, we don't do it with our normal way. We do it with this inverse mod method. With this, we can actually use extent the extended Euclidean algorithm to be able to do the division. So we divide mod p. So we take our value of b and the value of p from our elliptic curve and do the division. So here's some Python code here which implements this method. And we can see here, uh, this is us multiplying the uh, value that we have here by the b value to give us the value that Bob's going to send. Then this is where uh, Alice will actually multiply by her private key the value that Bob sent. After that, we'll now divide by taking the inverse mod of p and then take the, uh, the prime number in which uh, the, we are operating in. So in this case, it's the n value for the, uh, for, for the curve. And then we'll multiply that by uh, the value here to give us the value that goes back. And then we'll check to see if the two values are the same. So let's see an implementation of that. Okay, so here we have the code. And in this case, we'll pick a blinding value of 20. Obviously, we would pick a large random number, but we'll make it quite simple just now. We'll pick a value of 20, and we can see in the end, the value here is equal to the value of here, which means that we've been able to uh, validate uh, Bob Bob's vote. So the code that we have here is just our elliptic curve code with our inverse mod, and then we can do our scalar multiplication. That's a standard thing that we actually do. To be able to multiply together, we can create uh, these key pairs if we require, but this is the code that uh, makes it all work. Okay, so there's our sample run that we get. Okay, there's Bob's uh, secret value there. That's a random value. He then creates a value on the elliptic curve here. And then uh, this is Alice's private key, Bob's Bob's binding key. So Bob will send this value here multiplied by 13 to give us this. Alice then takes that value and multiplies by her value, taking the mod of the prime number and gets this value. We then divide by this value to get this value. And then as we've seen before, we look at the Alice checks this value to see if it matches and hopefully it should. Okay, so that's been a way of how we can uh, do our privacy-respecting uh, voting system.